Hello and welcome back to another cosplay Evo video. Sorry to take a little while, but today I'm gonna show you guys how to make bird person. Bird person? You appear to be dying. I will make efforts to prevent this, but wait, 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 wrong guy. Uh, we're gonna show you how to make Tokoami's uh bird head, and we're gonna make a little bit of dark shadow. So let's get to it. Welcome back, ch chatters, people, YouTubers. All right, so I got my file off this guy called Colin Cosplay, I believe. And then I just printed it out, taped it together, cut out my patterns, as you're going to see here. Just a little, you know, choke yummy head. I got lucky and then cut it. I got lucky with these patterns because I thought I'd make it myself, but nope. Thank God someone actually made them, uh, made them already. And I pinned uh, some of these to various sticks of foam. Like the beak part, I made this out of five millimeter. And the front beak part, I made out of a thinner foam so it can bend easier and I can glue it easier. And I glued, I made the head part out of a 10 millimeter foam because I want to have a, a thick head. And yeah, as you can see right here, time lapse. Now I did record this part, make sure to heat up your foam, especially the bigger pieces, because what if, if it's curved, it's going to be easier to glue. And make sure to use contact cement. Contact cement is the, the best way for gluing even together. In my opinion, the best glue for uh, keeping a strong seal. give it a few minutes to dry and then it's like sticking on two paper stickers together and uh i usually wait for two to five minutes and then i see i'm um, actually putting everything all together and here it is i put some spackle on it because there was an opening but you, you guys can skip this step if you want now as you can see i put a wooden dowel at the, on the sides because i actually want to make the beak hinge and uh, on the bottom of it but the file I got uh, didn't have a uh, beak part, so I, I had to freehand it, but I think it turned out really well. And yeah, I'm gonna show you how I did it. It's nothing too simple. Actually, it's just two uh, pieces of foam on the side on uh, a rubber band. And uh, that way I can move, I can talk while the beak moves. So I thought I want to do it and it turned out really cool. As you can see, I put this piece right there. I was struggling because I was thinking I was square, but I was just turn it a little bit in that diamond shape and I was like I glued it and then cut off the excess and you see I put a layer of yellow paint not that hard I actually coated it all in black and then painted the yellow beak and then I painted some I painted a mesh I had black mesh so I painted white then painted a yellow and I made some eyes out of some circles as you can see it was a bigger circle of black and then a tinier circle in red then a tinier circle in black again and you see you see me painting the white fabric with yellow you're gonna see why in a bit but this is this is what I did for the fabric. Now right here, audio cut out again. I'm not, the GoPro audio sucks, but this is my entire Tokoyami head completed with the moving uh, mouth. But I'm gonna show you what my concept is. I'm gonna add a little more detail. You can obviously stop here or watch the other guy's video. I found it more helpful. But I went off Rage. Rage. I forgot. I'm sorry. I'll leave his handle down below. This is this one I'm basing my suit off of. I thought it was really cool and I was gonna do it. So let's start doing it.
Now, I just want to put a disclaimer out. Most of these parts I made were out of scrap foam, and these are the boots I'm going to use. I actually, there's some great trimming on it. I put some Sharpie on it, but you can obviously just uh, make some or buy some more uh, boots. You can obviously go thrift. And um, that beak right there. Most of this is made out of scrap foam. I just want to put that out there. I know I cut myself off, but either way, this is all made out of scrap foam. Well, most of it, majority of it besides the claws I make but that's gonna be in the later on the video so stay tuned After my boots are all done, I'm uh I got some scrap fabric from my last Midoriya build. I have some left over, and I'm gonna sew some stuff for the, his wrist. He has some kind of wrist things on him. I'm sewing it. You guys don't have to use a uh, sewing machine. You can obviously hand stitch it, or use like fabric glue or hot glue, or or super glue. Either way, it works. I just use the sewing machine so I can so I can be stronger on my wrist. And if you barely know how to use a sewing machine just like me, you're gonna mess up. If it's okay to mess up, it's just gonna grow. But as you can see, I, I did this like four different times because I used different fabrics and I forgot how to, and some of the shrink broke off when I was sewing, so that was kind of annoying. But either way, I'm gonna show you how it fits on my wrist. Right there. As you can see. This is like a marine vinyl. Not marine vinyl, it's like a Yaya yeah, Hans Ultra Premium Black Vinyl, I believe. I got the shiny uh, version, not the matte kind, because I just had that left over. As you can see, there's how it looks on my wrist. Put the stitching on the bottom so you can hide it. And for his collar, I use the scrap. I use the sleeve of a uh, short sleeve red T-shirt. I'm using a sewing machine again, but I actually ended up gluing the Velcro I got because there's an adhesive on the back, and it kind of messed up my needle. I clean that up, but yeah, I just hot glued it because you know I, I couldn't. I don't know what to use. And then, as you can see, that's how it looks on me with the little collar. And then I'm gonna make the top a uh, dark shadow uh, piece on the right, or yeah, on the right side. And I try to show you guys all my uh, lines. There is a pattern on there. I'm telling, I'm just gotta trust me on it. As you can see, I cut it out. I just basically used the uh, the Tokoyami pattern and I kind of modified it. And I'm gonna add more pieces. And one thing I forgot to mention is I put a metal rod in my Tokoyami head. That way it can keep its curve when I put it on. That's why it's cur it's curved in the front. And I also put a metal rod inside the uh, right side of the dark shadow because I wanted to allow it to keep the curve. And, uh, and use contact cement again. You're gonna see as I uh, put this piece inwards, it's not gonna curve as much. It's gonna curve, but it's not gonna curve as much as I wanted. And if you curve it as much as you want, it's gonna be open. And I heated it to give it more of a curve, but ended up putting a metal rod in there so I can keep its curve. Right after that, there's gaps open. That's why I use some spackle here. This is just regular um, spackle you just use for uh, filling in like your bathroom plumbing or something. But yeah, it just I use it because it just fills in some of these cracks. And it's good. You're gonna crack if once if you bend it more. Just use some super glue and then 
pinned right over. As you can see, it's all ready. You gotta wait for that, wait for it to dry. It may take an hour or two, depending on where you're at. It could be hot, it could be cold, whatever. Put some water on to uh, get rid of all the other. Cause I sanded it. You have to sand it to get clear. As you can see, oh, and I, what that fell. Use some orange paint here to get some of the edges where the Z is at, and you can see why. I use the IFP as a little template here. As you can see, I covered it in black and then put one coat of uh, purple on it because um, it's going to give it uh, some kind of thing. I thought it would, I needed more coats, but no, I really liked how it looked. I thought I was going to do a different technique. I'm here. I had trial and error magnets, but I ended up putting it on top of the Tokoyami head, which I didn't want to do, but I had to do anyways so I can make it removable. Now I made my own pattern for these. If you guys want a template, I'll gladly make them for you, but you know, either mind. I used a Dremel to make some V groove cuts because by hand I suck at making V groove cuts. And I just used a Dremel not to go make sure not to go through it because it will through your foam. And I'm just going nice and uh, slow here, trying to get on the lines. And as you can see, if once once we make these V grooves, there's, there's a reason why we do it. We're going to put some low temp hot glue in there because it's going to hold it in place while we bend it. You're going to see why in a minute. And it makes this kind of shape right here for the hand. I want to give it like a three dimensional shape instead of a flat, a flat one. And as you can see, I put a wooden dowel right there so I can actually put my hand through it and make sure it not slips. And these are all the fingers. These are on one roll of foam. I had to get an extra roll of foam just to do these. And make sure to bevel them. I I made 20 of these. I had to cut out 20 of them. Make sure to bevel 10 of them one way and bevel the other one another way. I will teach you how right now. You bevel towards you and it's going to be uh, somewhat of a bevel. And then you cut, you bevel the other way to make another bevel. And right there, you can see me contact spending all these. These were a pain to glue and cut out. This, by far the most tedious part and I had to glue all these one by one as you can see me here and I have the full one of one full hand right there as you can see the pinkies on its last life I actually had to cut it off a bit so, and then re-glue it and I hand painted all black which was which sucks but my friend lend me plastic dip uh, so I can cover all black this is a game changer if you want to hand paint it you can hand paint it uh, I used a lot of thick coats for hand painting, but here's the plastic dip. And I did the same technique for the hands. I wanted to do a nice uh, streak of uh, purple. Now, usually I would say, you know, uh, to minimize streaks, you know, to go one direction. But this, I want to make it like a shadow effect or whatever kind of spoked effect. So I did everywhere. I kind of went splotchy and went everywhere. This way it really helps. And I hit everything with this gloss um, acrylic sealer. Seal everything. I sealed everything with this. And there it is, your own Tokoyami cosplay. As you can see, this piece is removable. I think it's gonna be a little difficult. I would put it on by myself here. Yummy helmet. As you can see. And I was talking about here the rubber bands. I'm not sure, I don't think I saw it. But I sealed everything in all of that sealer. So give it a shine, a gloss finish. As you can see this is how it looks. You can't see the uh, the yellow on here. I'm trying to see. You can't see the yellow on here. You can see it clear, but let's see if I can put it on here. You can see it? Kind of. Kind of. You can see it kind of. But this is my full Tokoyami Dark Shadow helmet. Ta-da! So if you guys like this video, comment, like, and subscribe if you want to see more. 
you know, I'm making more props, more stuff. If you got, if you have any suggestions, leave it in the comments down below. And that's it for my whole entire cosplay. See you next time. Bye.